So welcome Alex Kerolf. Alex is Chief Happiness Officer at a company called Woohoo! As well as being author of five books, the one that I first came to, to know you um, is Happy Hour is Nine to Five. And your latest book is called Leading with Happiness. So in a nutshell, your work nowadays is all about being happy at work, right? Yes. So before we dive fully into that sort of happiness at work stuff and, and how you found your passion, I wanted to go back a little bit in time because before becoming one of the happiest people that I know, <laughs> um, you, you worked in IT. Now, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you weren't happy when you worked in IT, but your career was very different. Um, you co-owned sure. an IT company back then. Can you tell us a little bit about what you used to do? Yes, definitely. So, it, it, and, and the connection to happiness at work is actually still there because sort of one of my values has always been that I want to be happy in whatever I do. Um, and I vividly remember when I was in high school and I was trying to pick what to study at university, you know, I wanted to study something that was fun, something I enjoyed, something I was genuinely interested in. And that at the time was computers um, and programming. Um, so that's what I did, um, and I remember, I actually remember um, going to a career fair at the university, and you know, somebody, the, the speaker there asked the audience, so, so what kind of work would you do? And, and my reply was, I wanna do work that's fun, right? So I studied IT, I got my master's degree, I, I got a couple of jobs uh, as a consultant that did not make me happy. Uh, um, and then at, at, at some point it was time to start my own company. Um, I, I got together with, with two other guys, and we talked about what kind of a company did we want to start. Um, and, and very quickly, we realized that more than anything else, we wanted to start a company where people were happy at work, um, where people actually enjoy working. Uh, also, because the, the, the previous consulting jobs we had, we were not very happy. So, so when we got the chance to start our own company, we talked a lot about, you know, how can we do that? How can we create a company where people will actually, you know, uh, be excited to go to work? And I think we, we, I think we succeeded quite well. So, so what changed? Because I remember you telling me the story that you, you stopped doing that. And my impression is that when you stopped doing that, you not only exited that company, but you also exited the industry, not really knowing exactly what you were going to do next. Exactly. So, so what, yeah, what was it that changed? Yeah, well, what happened in, in our company after a while was that I became unhappy at work. Um, and I, I felt impatient because we were, I, I felt like we were doing the same kind of projects for the same kind of clients in the same kind of way, and we weren't really getting anywhere. Uh, you know, the company was growing. We were making good money. That was all there. But I felt like we were stagnating, and I, I wanted to push us in a new direction. And I was the only one who wanted to do that. And that created a lot of tension inside the organization. And I, I felt like I wasn't being valued for my contributions. I felt like I wasn't being listened to. Um, and I became really, really unhappy at work for about a year. Um, then what happened uh, was that, and, and by the way, I, I, can, I can honestly tell you that without a doubt, that was the worst, single worst year of my life. Uh, because I was, you know, that company was a huge part of my identity of who I was. And I was unhappy there. Um, and if you're not happy in the company you created yourself, you know, how, how stupid is that, right? <laughs> um, so I was really miserable. It affected me at work. It affected me outside of work. I became really tired and cranky and I lost a lot of my creativity. So uh, we ended up selling the company um, and we, we sold it to a, a huge uh, Scandinavian IT company. And I decided I didn't want to work for them. So, so as part of the merger, the part of the, the, the acquisition, I announced I, w I would be quitting. Everybody else went on and worked for that company, but I decided I would quit. And so, so I came out of this really stressful, really unhappy period at work, and 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 suddenly I was unemployed, and, and you know uh, I was in a really fortunate situation that I you know we sold the company, so I had money in the bank, uh, I had no financial worries, but I was you know looking for the next step. And what I did at that that point, which I thought was uh, a good move, was I, I gave myself some time off to not think about what I was going to do next. <laughs> Just some time to decompress, which I think I needed. And it's kind of funny because I was, you know, I was pretty sure that, you know, two or three weeks and then I'll, then I'll have an idea of what is, uh, of what's coming next for me. It took me six months. <laughs> so that didn't go to plan. 
but then uh, out of that period um, and about six months later came the idea that you know Czech is awesome, IT is fantastic, uh, writing code and, and helping clients with their software needs is amazing. But what I'm truly passionate about is happiness at work, and and I should do something with that. That's out of out of that uh, the idea came. So let's go back a little bit because you I can hear how things have panned out for you in the meantime. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that you have this joy and passion for what you're doing and that everything's worked out. But but can I go back to that time where, OK, so in the end, you decided to sell the company and not only that, that your decision was to not stay with the company any longer when all of your co-founders and, and co-workers was, were staying on. Like, Where did that decision come from? Was it something that just emerged was there a moment where you just felt no I can't can't do this anymore and also how did that feel at that time uh I I can answer that last question with a scary as hell Mm. (laughs) this is not an easy decision right um and and there was that sort of one breaking point we were in a in a company strategy session where I presented what I what I felt was like here's a good plan here's something that will let us take the company in, in a new direction Without risking or, or you know, or jeopardizing what we already have, here is a really cool idea for how we can take this further, and and everybody else voted it down, and and, and that at that company strategy session, uh, that's when it came to a head for me, and that was the breaking point for me, and that's when I announced that you know what, I'm out. Looking back at it, I can I can I can I can only look back at that decision with pride. Because tough as the decision was, and and hard as it as it is to make that kind of decision, I did it. You know, I was in a situation where I was not happy at work, and I I I did something about it, uh, and decided to to walk away from from the company that I co-founded. And that that's I'm I'm pretty proud of of uh, of, of making that decision. I'm not necessarily proud of the process because it was you know I make it sound like a very deliberate decision. It wasn't. It was you know it was very much. Uh, like I said, a breaking point. Mm. It was, uh, I can't do this anymore. I'm out. I quit. Uh, mm. This sucks. Mm. Um, so at the time, there was no sense of clarity or of, you know, of having any clear idea of where I was going. There was just a, a sense that, nope, can't do this anymore. I'm out. Mm. I've got a real sense that the whole thing just felt a bit messy. Very. Oh, yeah. It's uh, completely messy. And, mm. and, uh, messy and emotionally painful for me and for the other guys in the company, and mm. uh, there's a lot of conflict around that at the time, you know. Um, but but that being said, uh, it's, it's staying on under those conditions with the emotional state that I was in would have been even more messy and and emotionally costly in the long run, right? Mm. So so there's little doubt, there's no doubt, no doubt that was the right decision. Um, but it, it's a process like that is I don't think for me would not have been could never have been clean and clear cut and and made with full deliberation of all the factors involved it was like nope can't do it anymore this sucks i quit mm. so then you have time off and you think it's going to be a couple of weeks <laughs> to, to figure everything out it turns out to yeah. be a number of months um, yeah. And and you were very very deliberate in saying that during that time you chose to not think about work and to not think about what you were going to do next. Yes. So and also I was not out there reading job ads or or you know uh, taking meetings or whatever. I was basically decompressing, uh, taking a lot of time off, doing whatever I wanted, and 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 out of that. Uh, and and I, and I will and I will say this: that period was incredibly frustrating. It was it was fun, but also frustrating, because I was used to I was used to getting up in the morning and having a job, right? I was used to getting up in the morning, going into the office and working on a project for a client, or working on growing the company, or whatever. And suddenly, I did not have that. There was there was you know, nobody needed me for anything. Uh, there was not that sense of making a difference. And also on a, on a very basic level, you know, when people ask me, so what do you do? I was used to saying I co-own an IT company, and that feels pretty good. And now, when people ask me, "So, what are you doing?" I'm like, I'm unemployed. Uh, I don't really do anything, which is a really weird feeling. The first many, many times you had to say that. Yeah. 
and and then on top of that there was this you know um, i was i had this feeling that there was a cool idea out there for me something cool for me to do and but it wasn't coming you know where is it where is that cool idea um so in many ways that process was absolutely necessary for me but it all it was also took way longer and was way more frustrating than i would have imagined mm. I can totally relate to that. <laughs> very, very much understand. So what did you do? I mean, you said, okay, I took time out, I decompressed, you know, yeah. whatever. It was frustrating. But what? But describe a typical day during that time or a typical week. Get up in the morning, have breakfast, read a book, go to the beach, uh, exercise, uh, go see a movie, whatever. Um, anything else but working and, mm. and, and looking for work. Mm. And so how were, were you aware of this new idea emerging? You know, it sounds nope, like you had nope, this. No, nope, no, nope, no, nope. it, 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 uh, it sprang into existence fully formed. And I can, wow. even, I can remember the exact moment it happened. Oh my goodness. Tell us. It was, it was a near <laughs> religious awakening. It was, I was so, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend and I were at the beach. Uh, we're, we're lying there on the beach. I'm reading a good book and suddenly, you know, the skies open and, and I know I'm going to make people happy at work. And it was a really weird moment because uh, there was that idea. Um, and I had no idea how, right? I'm not a consultant. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not an organizational psychologist or leadership expert or anything. Uh, but it was just, you know, in that moment, that idea came to me. And I knew, yeah, there it is. That's what I'm doing next. And it's not an idea that had been brewing in my mind as such. It just, boom, there it was. Wow. And I, and I vividly remember, you know, as, as part of this process, uh, realization that came to me was, you know, given that I had no, let's say, no expertise in this field at all, right? Uh, I had some practical experience from our own IT company, uh, but, but no knowledge or expertise in this area. I had no idea if I could do it. Uh, but I remember thinking that this idea was so important to me that I would rather do it and fail than not do it. Of course, I would way rather do it and succeed, and and we ended up ended up ultimately succeeding, which is fantastic. Uh, but for me, the the ultimate point of this was not, you know, could I make a viable business out of this? The the, the ultimate point for me and the reason I do it, did it was that this concept of being happy at work just gripped me so strongly that I pretty much had to do it. Normally, at about this stage of an interview. I'm hearing a lot of self-reflection and self-awareness practices within my interviewee. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I'm not necessarily getting that from you. What I'm getting <laughs> from you is a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of action, a lot of decision making. And I'm, and I'm really curious, is self-reflection a conscious practice within you is it something that you're aware that you do or are you driven by something else I, I'm, I'm, that's a very good question I never thought about that which probably is the answer right there right <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I have I have a more of a bias for action that being said, I am I am quite reflective and I think about things and I want to know how things work, including myself. I, I do want to know how I work. Um, I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I, I do tend to examine my own choices and think about, so why did I do that? How did I do that? Did I do it well enough? I tend to be very critical of myself as well. But I, I don't have a, I don't have a deliberate practice, uh, a deliberate method I use for this. It's just that I, I think about things, I think about everything and I think about them all the time. Um, including about myself. It's never enough to, to just, you know, uh, think about something. I want to act on it. Tell us more about your work that you do now. <laughs> I understand that there is a Danish word that, you know, on, on which your work is based, because actually yes. in, in many other languages or practically all other languages, this word doesn't exist. Tell us about that. And that was probably my one, uh, my, one of my many advantages was that I, I'm doing this work in Denmark, uh, or mostly in Denmark, started in Denmark, certainly, uh, where the idea of happiness at work is commonly accepted. Uh, it's, it's, in fact, it's so commonly accepted that we have the word Arbeitsglede. Uh, Arbeitsglede is a Scandinavian word, exists in, in Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish, um, and it basically means happiness at work. Uh, Arbeit means work. 
glæde means happiness, so arbejdsglæde means work happiness. Um, and, and every Scandinavian knows that word, knows what it is, can describe to you, you know, uh, whether or not they feel that. It's, it's a commonly accepted focus for workplaces in, in Scandinavia. The, the best advice that you can give to get happier at work? <laughs> you gotta, first of all, you gotta realize that it's possible, right? Um, and, and that's where a lot of people stall, because a lot of people think, yeah, I'm unhappy at work, that's just the way it is. Like, everybody hates their jobs, right? And no, everybody don't, don't hate their job. There are a lot of people out there who love what they do. There are a lot of great workplaces out there. So the number one thing is to realize that it's possible to be happy at work. If you don't know that, you never will be. The second thing is then to realize that you can actually make a difference, right? You can either work to become happier in the job you have, um, and there are actually many things you can do. Um, or at, if that turns out to be impossible, you can do like, like you did and so many <laughs> other people have done, right? And, and get the hell out and go work somewhere else. Hmm. Um, and that's actually that's another thing that, that keeps people from being happy at work is this idea that you should never quit, right? Uh, uh, what is it? Winners never quit and quitters never win? Hmm. It's complete nonsense. There's a website hmm. called internationalquityourcrappyjobdate.com that we created where people can test themselves and see if it's time to quit. If anybody out there listening to this is looking for a new job, don't just look for a job with a you know 15% higher salary or a slightly bigger company car you know none of that matters uh you know you should of, of course you get a salary that's fair i mean that goes without saying um but look for a job where you can have results in relationships look for a job where you can grow professionally do amazing work make a positive difference uh through your work and then look for a workplace where you will fit in where you will be valued as a human being where you will have good relationships with your coworkers and your boss um, and if you can have that then you will be happy at work Speaking of results and relationships, about 18 months ago or thereabouts, I remember getting a Facebook message from you whereby you very, very openly and honestly said, do you know what? I'm really not very happy at work right now. So, you know, you had this big epiphany 15 years ago. You found this passion. You're taking loads of action and, and you're in a position where you acknowledged that you weren't happy at work. Tell us about that. What what <laughs> happened? What what did you notice and what did you do about it? Well, on a very basic level, what I noticed was that I would I would come to work and and I simply didn't feel like being there. I didn't feel like uh, doing the the things I had to do. None of the tasks that were in front of me appealed to me. There was none of that passion. So I was like, yeah, I have to, I have to write an article. I can't really be bothered, you know. I have to answer my emails. Don't really feel like it. So basically, on, on a very basic level, I just didn't feel like doing my job. Um, and again, this uh, I could, I could probably have forced myself to do it. You usually can, but I think the uh, the cost of that is that the more times you force yourself to do it, the the more the more you know, the, the, the less you want to, the less you want to do it in the future, right? Mm. So instead of doing that, I decided to actually listen to myself, take that seriously. So I decided to give myself a month off. Um, so I took, I took a, uh, an entire month off. And, and as you said, I, I openly admitted here, this is, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm going to do. So, um, so that's what I did. And for an entire month, I read no emails, took no phone calls, did no speeches, wrote no articles. I just, did whatever I wanted to do, um, and again, decompressed, and and came out of that with a renewed uh, sense of oh yeah yeah this is what I want to do, because the thing is that that uh, you know when you when you have a uh, when you have work it takes up a lot of your time it takes a lot of a lot of your energy and it takes up a lot of your focus, especially if it's work you don't like very much right. So, so having the, the space, having the time and having the energy to actually think about where you're at in your life um, and to basically notice yourself and, and become aware of yourself can be really, really hard uh, when, you are, when you're working and especially if you're working in a job you don't like very much. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I felt very privileged uh, to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I mean, again, I'm very glad I did it. It was the exact right thing to do at the time. Mm -hmm. It really struck me what you said you know when you realized you were sat in the office and you didn't you didn't feel like answering those emails and you didn't feel like writing those articles and how you could have forced yourself 
Okay. And and what really struck me is how often in life, and, and actually it's almost culturally ingrained somehow, that we should force ourselves, that, that work is something that you do force yourself into doing. But it's it's just really fascinating that connection between, okay, you, you were aware that you could have forced yourself into doing that, yeah. but you didn't want to make forcing something a habit. And no, so, so it, instead and it, you flowed with what you really truly needed to do. Yes, because, and, and again, I believe that if you force yourself once, then you, gotta, then you have to force yourself even more the next day, right? Mm. There is a, a wonderful story about Leonard Cohen. Um, in, at the beginning of his, sort of early in his career, he's playing a concert. I've, and so he goes on stage, he starts playing, and, and he stops again because he's just not, you know, he's not there. So he goes out backstage, comes back on, tries again, and finally he just calls the whole thing off. And, 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 and the way he puts it, you can find the clip on YouTube, it's actually fascinating. He says, you know, we, we could be up here playing, I could be up here playing, but I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be honest, I would be faking it. Mm. Um, so instead, he actually chooses to cancel the concert. And can you imagine the, you know, the, the, the courage that kind of a decision must have taken mm. uh, when in front of a full concert hall, right? Mm. Um, but that's what he does, and I, and I think, Without, I, I haven't heard him said this, but I think you know, as a musician, if you fake it once, then maybe the next concert you have to fake it twice as hard, and then again and again. But if you listen to yourself in that situation, maybe the next time you can play with emotional honesty. Mm. And if, if 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 as an artist that's important to you, mm. yeah, then then you can perform your art better, but also in a way that is honest and genuine and authentic. And I've, I've seen him live many times. I was, I was a huge fan of Leonard Cohen. Um, and there was that presence about him mm. every single time. Mm. But there is that, it, it, in my opinion, this goes all the way back to schools, right? Uh, you know, so, so you're, a, you're a school kid, you're in second grade, and you just don't feel like going to school. What are you told? Do it anyway. Yeah. So you have to drag yourself into school. The whole day sucks because you don't want to be there. The next day comes along. Now you, you you even more don't want to go to school, but you still have to do it. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, we hold this uh, this self discipline, this ability to do things we don't want to, to force ourselves to do things we don't want to do. We hold that up as a virtue. Mm -hmm. uh, we we call those people strong. We call them disciplined. Uh, I, I don't I don't necessarily see it that way. What if what if we instead created schools that were so much fun and so compelling? that that students couldn't help but go mm. that they would wake up in the morning excited about going to school right mm. uh what if we had teachers that were so fascinating and good at their jobs that that they just you know drew kids into math so kids wanted to wanted to learn math mm. um and again and and then uh what if we had workplaces that was that were so much fun mm. that that employees just want to go and then if you know and everybody has an off day everybody has an off day and then if you find yourself, you know, wake up in the morning, you have an off day, what if you could just stay home? Mm. And then the next day, you actually want to go to work, and then you go to work there. Mm. Yeah. Here's what I realized. Work can be awesome. And if it can be awesome, then it should be awesome. Yeah. Uh, it, it, because here's the thing. Work can be an incredibly powerful force in people's lives. Mm. Um Work can be something that lets you grow professionally and personally. Mm -hmm. It can be something where you actually contribute to, a, a, to something that is meaningful to you and in some way help create a better world. It can be something where you get to use your, your, you know, your, your, your best skills, mm -hmm. where you work together with all other cool people to achieve something you believe in. Uh, that's what work can be. And if it can be that, then it should be that. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, there are many things we have to do in life, right? You have to eat. Or, or you will die, right? And, and interestingly, you know, food is amazing, and, and food can actually be a really pleasurable experience. Uh, you have to drink, um, you know, and, and, and when you're thirsty, even a glass of water tastes amazing, right? You have to sleep, um, and, and sleeping feels really, really good. Mm -hmm. So it turns out that, that some of the things we, that we just have to do for our survival that we're forced to do, we're, we're so designed that we actually enjoy to do those things. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to work. This is not a fact of nature. This is a fact of the, the societies that, that we human beings have created. Um, everybody has to work. So for me, it's just fundamentally unfair that we, on the one hand, create a society where work is forced upon everybody. But then on the other hand, we create workplaces that suck, mm. that people hate. 
that situation is just not it's just not fair mm. um so that's why that's why i think everybody should love their work so given everything that you've done in your life and all of the lessons that you've learned along the way is there anything that you would say to your younger self if you had the opportunity to <laughs> Well, that depends on how much younger. If we're talking my teenage self, uh, I was I was a very confused and uh, and angsty teenager. <laughs> I don't know that you could have said anything to that guy that that he would have listened to. And then and then later on, I think from from you know my university days and onwards, uh, no, that you know from then on, I, I it's not like I had it down, but at least I had direction. Um, and, and, and were actually, you know, was actually doing things I enjoyed. Your life now on face value, I mean, you seem very happy, you seem very successful, you seem very mm. passionate, you travel the world, um, you're very, very active, healthy, fit, etc. <laughs> um, do you think that your life now is what your younger self would have designed it for you? No, are you crazy? There's no way I could have imagined what I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm like now. Um, uh, just you know, just uh, for career-wise, for instance, you know that the fact that I'm now a public speaker was never in the cards. Uh, it, it's it was never something I dreamed about or would have imagined that I even could do. I would say that it was probably so far out of my skill set um, in my IT days that it would never have occurred to me that I could do this. So is there anything that you think your younger self would say to you now? <laughs> any, any messages uh, for you? Uh, yeah. I, th- I think he would, he would have been pretty amazed at, at where I'm at now. Uh, maybe even shocked and bewildered. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I do think, I, I do think that if, certainly if I look back to my IT days, right? And, and to the frustration I felt. So this is uh, so this is eighteen years ago. So I was uh, thirty thirty one at the time. A lot of the frustration I felt at the at the, the IT company that I co founded um, was because I wanted to do some things uh, that I they, you know that the rest of the company weren't interested in doing. And what I'm doing today is actually uh, you know again it's it's actually based on that what I wanted at the time. And except that it's way beyond that, right? It's it's way beyond what I what I imagined at the time. So so I think I think my thirty one year old self would be nice work, um, and good on you for 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 taking taking that sort of infant idea and then running with it and creating something that you know that 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 takes you around the world and that helps um, and that 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 seems to help some people uh, around the world i think that that will be i think that will be uh, i think that's what he would say nice work <laughs> <laughs>